Hi, it's Anne. Thanks for stopping by. So Dan and I are back from our camping trip and uh, we have a bunch of brochures and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to take brochures, which are the, you know, the, the standard paper ephemera that drifts into your life uh, when you're uh, when you're on vacation. I thought, what if I turn that into a piece, um, a couple of brochures into pieces of ephemera uh, for my junk journals? And so I was playing around and I thought, I kind of came up with this. Um, I took a brochure from the Friends of Silver Falls. We were at Silver Falls State Park. And I, I'm not entirely loving this. I will tell you that straight up. Um, but I made it into this sort of fold out journal card flip out thing. I might even have to pull you back out and see more of my messy desk. And lots of journaling space in this, but you can see that the basis for this is a brochure. There's journaling space on the back and it folds front and, you know, together. I'll tell you what I don't love about this is, um, is the closure. Because uh, I wanted to do something involving that, you know, this uh, uh, policy closure with a button and string, paper button. Um, but I did, I, I didn't really, really love that. What I did like is I did like doing collaging on part of the brochure cover, because this whole thing originally was a brochure cover that I cut. I like doing collaging over some of the text. And for collaging, I used only um, our campsite. I had a couple of copies of our uh, campsite map. Uh, I coffee dyed it, um, and I coffee dyed it again because I didn't get it dark enough the first time. And I liked the collaging with that. I didn't, there was enough variety in text in this camp map that I could have some kind of interesting collaging. So I thought, let me have another go at this, but I, I like the basic structure. I'm sure I'll do something with this. But um, let's let's have a go at uh, uh, at something that has a little bit of a better closure than this, but still has has a way of of using up a brochure. I guess this technically isn't a brochure, although it's brochure style. It's a a trail guide for Silver Falls State Park where we were. And let me bring you in a little bit closer. Um, I, I, let's let's just have a go at at using this. One thing I want to be mindful of is the length on this. This is nine inches long, and that's a little bit long. So I'm gonna want to cut yet yeah, to make this um, a, a a little bit um, uh, a little bit shorter to fit into my journal. But we'll deal with that. So anyway, you know, are you like me that you just collect brochures when you go places? We have some. Oh, here's I, I dug into my my supply of uh, brochures from last summer, my golly, when we were down in the Redwoods and in Northern California, we got brochures at every turn. So I'm probably gonna be using those again. But the first thing I wanna do is I want to capture uh, this um, uh, this brochure front. And they're all printed in, in different ways, but I'm just gonna cut through this. Most of them I have found do have a fold at the top. You know, they t go together like road maps or sewing patterns. You know, they're all, all very creatively accordion folded together. But when you're done using them, it really is nice to preserve them if we can. Now, many of them, because they do have this fold at the top, I'm gonna. I'm afraid gonna be back and forth a lot. Um, you could easily just use this. Put some paper on the inside and on the back, and just use this uh, in your junk journal. You could, you know, cut off uh, uh, cut off the bottom if you need to. If it's too long, this one is kind of a shame to use the inside part, uh, be, or, or to to lose the uh, the bottom part because you got that splash of the falls. But you know, we we probably are not going to be able to save the whole thing. Uh, anyway, so I. Th that would be a great way just to tuck into a journal um a, a journal pocket but we're going to we're going to go you know in the little more elaborate uh, route here i'm going to cut this down a little bit now i'm down to one layer and i'm going to try to preserve where it says south falls here 
South Falls is close to where we were, we were camping. There's many, many waterfalls at Silver Falls State Park. There is a reason it's known as the crown jewel of the Oregon State Park system. We have camped there many times, but not for quite a few years. So, okay, this is a decent, this is a decent height. The next thing I'm gonna do with this cockamamie scheme I got going here is to take a piece of paper bag and I'm gonna glue this down onto this brown paper. And I'll bring in my, my glue book, which is an old phone book. Can you believe we still have phone books? I can't remember the last time I used one. I mean, I literally cannot remember the last time I used one to look anything up. I mean, when you have, when you have Google, why do you look things up anyplace else? However, I do like it when the phone books come through because they're good for gluing on. All right, this is going. I'm gonna back this onto my grocery store paper and oh, it's sticking over a little bit. There we go. Now, the key to this, again, I've only done really one of these, one and a half, I guess. So, you know, N equals one and a half if you're doing a sample size. But the key to this in my estimation is that when you're gluing um, uh, your brochure front uh, on onto your um, grocery store paper, your brown paper, I'm using brown paper because it's kind of thick, but the key is, is having, you know, inch, inch and a half extended on either side because those are gonna be the hinges that will allow for that flippy, that flippy cover as we will so technically refer to it. All right, there's this. Now I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna go back to my brochure and I'm gonna cut out, I'm gonna cut out a little floppy part. Again, technical terminology. And so that means I'm gonna to wanna to fold on the left side so it'll be sort of book-like. The covers of brochures are often so spectacular. Why wouldn't they be, you know? They save their best photos for, for the cover. They meaning their marketing people. Okay, so I'm cutting this piece, this folded book-like piece, so it's gonna be the same height as what I trimmed this down to be. So let's get that done. Yeah, it's a, I just think this is kind of an interesting idea. I always have so much that I want to write about um, in, uh, in my journals. I, I, I keep a daily journal for my, uh, when we're on our travels, but I, I always, always have a little bit more that I want to write about too. You know, for example, at Silver Falls, uh, so many of the trails, I mean, you can hike behind waterfalls. We did that and it just, it's just always great. Um, but I always have more, you know, than, than just the daily stuff that I want to write about after we've been on a hiking trip like this. All of these trails, uh, may, so many of them were built in the 1930s by the CCC and Dan's uh, father back in the 30s was a member of the CCC, which I think was Civilian Conservation Corps, I think. Anyway, I get very sentimental when I think about, you know, young young Americans uh, uh, in the Depression being, you know, hired to build, you know, these, these really great public works. I'm going to switch back to what I'm going to um, do next. I t if you saw my camping, my crafting at camp video, you saw that in my kit of craft supplies that I took along, I took along an old blank journal just for the purpose of harvesting. Uh, its pages. I really recommend having something like this on hand in your craft supply, whether you're traveling or not. Um, 
because it's just such a good source of blank paper. If you're wanting to add a lot of journaling space to something, it, that's literally what this is. And it travels very nicely and very neatly when it's in its, in, in its original home. So that's why I really like having something like that along. And, um, and I'm gonna continue using that for the journaling space that I want to create on this part of the brochure. So let me just sort of tear this down. Oh, my desk is such a mess. Which is nothing that unusual. And I'll take it down to about, about there. Anyway, um, when I have all the feelings <laughs> about the history of some of, uh, of some of these beautiful natural places uh, that we visit, I just want to have more space uh, to write about it and to you know record some of the history and some of the things I observed, but also you know just sort of you know thinking about what a great program that was and you know how my late father-in-law, whom I, I never knew, he actually died um, long before Dan and I were married. Uh, you know, what a big formation that was in, in his youth and his coming of age and having a part of, uh, of doing some of these public works programs. And that, you know, to my knowledge, he was, you know, not building uh, the, the trails at uh, Silver Falls State Park, but, you know, Somebody's brother was, somebody's son was, somebody's father-in-law was, and you know they, they all had a hand in um, in making these things happen. So I always love knowing about some of the the background of these state parks uh, that we're in. Also, the the waterfalls are so spectacular. Uh, at Silver Falls, as you might guess from their name, and you saw a little bit of a, of one of the waterfalls um, in my last video. But um, apparently, before it became preserved as part of the state, state park system, um, the, the waterfalls uh, became well known because some huckster uh, was was charging people money to push old dilapidated cars over the edge of those falls. And you look at this natural beauty. I mean, look at that. Can you imagine an old jalopy going over there and, you know, people being, paying a price to see it happen? And yet, um, that did happen. And I'm glad it didn't happen for very long. All right, let me just quit my yapping and... get this inside part of this brochure set to go. We did have a wonderful, wonderful time. It was cold, chilly, and rainy a few days. It was absolutely gorgeous other days. We liked them both. On the cold and chilly days, we were snug inside the camper and catching up on reading and and uh, doing our camp cooking and just enjoying being away. Fortunately. Fortunately, I guess fortunately, the cell phone and LTE coverage was good enough there that we were we were not entirely out of the loop. So put this little thicker margin at the top of my pages. And the last one. was missing my garden a little bit during the week we were away, but it was a rainy, fairly rainy week in Portland while we were out of town. We were not far out of town. Silver Falls is just a little over an hour away from our home here in Portland. So 
not a long trip. There we go. All right, now we're kind of getting to the moment of truth. I want to attach this to this, but I want to do it with a hinged front that is this. So, okay, let's bite the bullet, friends. Let's just do this. Okay, this I will find. I hope I'm in frame. Let me come in just a little bit more. There we go. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yep, that's the midpoint. And I'm just going to slice South Falls, which was the, the waterfall actually closest to where our campsite was. We went quite a few times there over the course of the week. Sorry, South Falls. Don't worry, we'll get you put back together again. Okay, it looks like I could take a little sliver off this left-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That is even as I can. Anyway, the garden got along just fine, just fine without us in our absence. More seeds had sprouted and the lettuce had had grown to the point where we actually had wonderful fresh lettuce salads when we got home. All right, now here is the idea that I want to attach hinges on this top and bottom. So let me see how that's going to work. I'm going to fold this little hinge under this way, and I'm going to slip it into place here. Is that the right way? Yep, I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to do it. Using art glitter glue for this. Again, if you're new to the the wonderful world of journaling glues, there is no glitter in art glitter glue. It's just the name of the product. Why we do not know. All right, now here's this one. Fold that hinge. I, I, I'm hoping that this will work. There we go. There we go. Now, can you see? Yeah. This looks wildly complicated when you when you look at it, but it really isn't. I mean, look, I've been doing this for, you know, like less than 20 minutes. Nudge it over there just a little bit. Let's see if I can, that flat, well, that's gonna be good enough. That's gonna be fine. And now, here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do for, for the closure. Because I, I don't want to cover this up. And that's why every one of these that you do really can be different, depending on what kind of artwork you really want to showcase. But I think I'm going to put... I think I'm going to put two um, uh, closures, uh, um, paper buttons here. And that way I'm not on top of this. So yeah, let me let me just go ahead and do it. Well, let me kind of measure something in the middle here. And oh, 
get out a black pen so you can see it a little bit better, and maybe I will too. There we go. And I'm going to come in and make this dot. I'm hoping that'll work. Um, yeah. We'll just do the best we can with our limited experience. I'm going to take my all, and this, this is a, a just paper that I punched out of the campground map. So I don't have that scrap right here. Oh, no, there's one that I that I did. Um, this is just campground scrap. And uh, I uh, punched a couple of other holes out of a, a file folder just to give it a little backing. Oh, no, I don't want that one. I want this one. Not that the world would fall apart if I chose a different one. There we go. Now, and because I've marked it here, I'm going to just go through my, my paper button and go through there. So that's all pierced. And I had a couple of brads here. And let's do this one. There we go. And Well, there we go. I tried to make that look a lot harder than it actually was. So here we have, <laughs> I think that's actually almost done. The closure is there. Let me get, um, a little bit yeah I'm just gonna use a little wax thread and lasso that you could use anything you could use twine you could use embroidery floss you could use kitchen string. I have used all of those things for closures. There we go. Now, close that. And there we go. There's our closure. I, I have to admit, I like that closure better than I like the one that, you know, was all, you know, where did I, where did I even put that one that I cast cavalierly aside? Yeah, not crazy about that. I might duplicate that. I kind of hate to cover up the Silver Falls um, thing there, but I, this is just, this is just too loose. This I like a lot better. And so now when I'm writing about uh, uh, about our trip and the sentimental feeling that I'm having about the history of, um, uh, of the falls and the facilities there, it just is all nicely tucked away in here.
and I have all kinds of journaling space and all of this can go into a pocket. Oh, this is cute. This is cute. Okay, so we are 25 minutes in. I would like to look at one other kind of closure. I've not practiced with this one, but I just want to see how it's going to work. So uh, come with me if you dare. This is another brochure um, that I picked up in the town of Silverton, Oregon. There was some text up here. It was a brochure for a um, mural, a mu self-guided mural tour or something that was beautiful. We didn't happen to do it on this trip though. But I thought, <laughs> I thought that that little mural of this little dog was so cute. I'm not even a dog person, but I just thought that was really cute. So I took the front of, uh, of the brochure. I pasted it, you know, back down onto a grocery bag paper. And I took two other pages and I, you know, prepped them as you saw me do uh, earlier. And I'm looking for, I'm kind of looking for a different way to do a closure here. So will it work? I don't know. Um, my thought is that I want to cut a slit into part of the brochure and then have a little tab that fits into it. So anyway, let's just, let's just give this a go. I'm gonna fold a little hinge back and the collaging you know again these are all pieces off of the off, off of the campground map very very useful lots and lots of interesting icons um, on any kind of a campground map let's fold this here All right, now where I my my plan is I want to split it, I think right about here, but I do want I do want there to be some overlap. So I we're just we're just going to we're just going to go for it. Um I think I'm going to cut it a little bit above the um, where where the collage stops and the original mural begins, and you know this could well be a case of learn from my mistakes. <laughs> All right. Oh, gee. I, yeah, I, I'm just going to have to do it. I have not worked out the geometry of the whole thing yet. Okay, so no turning back from that. Now, the idea is that I would put a paper tab here that would tuck into a slit and that would be a closure. Now, let's see how much that yeah, might actually work. That might actually work. Um, I think it might be wise for me to put my hinged pieces in place so that I can accurately measure the amount of overlap. This is seat of the pants engineering. And again, I do not, <laughs> I do not recommend doing really, if you're doing any engineering of uh, aircraft, uh, um, aircraft or, uh, there we go, is this going to work? Whoops, wrong, wrong orientation. Yeah, there we go. If you're if you're doing any engineering of, of 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 anything you know that anybody's livelihood or lives depend on, do not do engineering this way. I'm sure you wouldn't. I trust you. Oh, Anne. 
Good heavens. You would think I hadn't slept in a week. Okay, let me let me start over again. This is the book as I want it to open. This is the bottom. There we go. Okay, well, third time's the charm. <laughs> There's a reason YouTube is free, folks. There we go. Okay, there is that. There's our little, yeah, that's gonna open the right way. Now, let's put the top part on there. We'll see where it overlaps. Yeah, I think, I think this might work. I think this might work, but again, I haven't proved myself to be very trustworthy in constructing here, have I? There we go. All right. Okay. This, this almost could sit like it is, you know, because there's our, uh, a little bit of, a little bit of glue that was still wet there. There we go. Good thing this is a junk journal. All right. Okay. Here's our overlap. So if we want this little guy to slip in there. We want that slit to be right around here. So I'm gonna sort of sketch that there. We want there to be enough room. And Go. Scalpel. Maybe I'll make it a little extra wide. And Okay, there's that little slot. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna fit in there. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. I'm gonna have to put a clamp on it and wait until that fully dries. But I think that's gonna be a decent closure there. I think that's going to be fine, and that's going to, yeah. And then you put a clamp here on the bottom, too. So, again, experiments. Um, but anyway, if you have brochures from your travels, and they are sitting around uh, waiting for something to be done with them, why not put them into your junk journal? Uh, just, you know, do a little collaging on places that you want to cover up. Get some uh, uh, some blank paper to put in there to create um, some journaling space. Write about your memories and keep this beautiful photography and this lovely artwork uh, that have gone into these brochures. That's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.